Yoel Romero is a beast, and everyone who has watched him fight would immediately agree to that. His brutality and viciousness have, have even earned him the name Soldier of God. Yoel! Soldier of God! What happened to you, USA? What happened to you? What's going on, you? Forget from the best of the best. When Yoel Romero finished his opponent, Chris Weidman, with a flying knee in UFC 205 at Madison Square Garden in New York, fans began to see Yoel in a different light. Some even started to wonder if he really was human. This left many asking, what did the Soviets do to this guy? Why is he so brutal? Well, let's find out who this beast really is. Yoel Romero was born in Pinar del Rio, Cuba. And by the age of eight, he was already enrolled in a sports boarding school. This was the beginning of his journey through the country's harsh pyramid training system, designed to nurture young athletes. Romero spent his days studying and training relentlessly, following a strict schedule that mirrored army discipline. From 7 a.m. wake-up calls to 8 a.m. breakfast breakfast, and then intensive study sessions from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. The rest of the day was dedicated to practice. Initially, Romero aspired to follow in his father's footsteps and become a boxer. However, local experts recognized his unique talent and potential in wrestling. He was eventually assigned to the wrestling section. Despite his impressive size and flexibility, Romero started at the entry-level stage of the pyramid gradually climbed the ranks. The pyramid system is a staggered selection process with four stages. Entry level, intermediate, junior, and the national team. Only the most exceptional young athletes in Cuba reach the final stage. What? Romero progressed through What's the up? levels. After 10 years, he was invited to join the national team in Havana. He then relocated to the Olympic Center, where he lived and trained alongside the best athletes in the country. The Cuban national team's competitive system was notoriously tough, with athletes literally fighting for food and privileges. Unlike other countries where all team members received equal treatment, Cuba's system favored the top performers. The leader of the team enjoyed the most privileges, while those lower in the ranks had to work harder to earn their place. Although harsh, the system motivated trainees like Romero to constantly aim for the top. By the time Yoel Romero was 18, he'd become the leader of his wrestling team. He was the best wrestler in his group, and the others tried to beat him to take his place. Yoel was determined to stay on top. Everything is possible in your life when you believe. When you believe, everything is possible. He was part of the national wrestling team for 15 years. It was a really tough environment. He had to live and train with his teammates in the same house. They were all competing against each other. Yoel had to be very strong and focused to handle the pressure. In 1997, Yoel started competing in international wrestling matches. He quickly became one of the best in the world. He was very strong, flexible, and had great technique, which made him stand out. He was so good that he easily beat the other top wrestlers in his first few years of competition. In 2009, Yoel Romero made a dramatic entrance into the Ultimate Fighting Championship. UFC, leaving a lasting impression on fans and critics alike. His debut match against Sasha Weinpolter was a shocking display of power, ending in a TKO victory for Romero. This impressive win set the tone for his next bout against Ricky Pulu, which he dominated with a devastating knockout in just 62 seconds.
Romero's name began to resonate throughout the UFC community. But it wasn't until his third consecutive win that he gained widespread recognition as a force to be reckoned with. That decisive victory came against Mikal Fihalka, whom Romero defeated in a mere four minutes and five seconds. This triumph cemented Romero's status as a rising star in the UFC, showcasing his exceptional skill, speed, and agility. As his winning streak continued, Romero's reputation grew became a household name among MMA enthusiasts. When Yoel Romero stepped into the UFC arena at the age of 32, critics and fans thought he was well past his prime. Way in. The only guy who freaked me out was Yoel. Yoel Romero would look so big at 185, you're like, how is that 185? How is it even possible? He looks like a heavyweight. They believed that his advanced age would hinder his performance he wouldn't be able to keep up with the younger, hungrier fighters. However, Romero had other plans. He silenced his doubters with a string of consecutive victories, each one more impressive than the last. I am here. I, I, yo no me he ido de aquí. Estoy aquí todavía en la lucha. I'm here in the struggle. I'm here, Joe. Never, never give up. Never give up indeed. Thank you very much, sir, for an outstanding fight. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Yoel Romero, ladies and gentlemen. With every win, the naysayers were forced to eat their words. Soon they were standing and applauding along with the rest of the crowd. He continued to dominate in the ring, leaving behind the shattered pride of the opponents he defeated. But, as with all good things, Romero's winning streak eventually came to an end. In a highly anticipated bout against Robert Whitaker, everything went south for Yoel Romero. Romero suffered a severe knee injury that left him in pain. Despite his efforts to continue fighting, the injury completely ruined any chance of offense he had. A unanimous decision, Robert Whitaker was declared the winner. Robert! The Reaper! Bringing Romero's impressive win streak to a halt at eight fights. After Yoel Romero's big fight, he had to get surgery on his knee. This was a big deal, and the doctor was very careful. When the doctor opened up Romero's knee, he was shocked at what he saw. Romero's bones were already starting to heal, and it hadn't even been a week yet. Usually, it takes months for bones to heal. But Romero's body was fixing itself at an incredible rate. The doctor was so surprised that he didn't know what to say. He'd never seen anything like this before. Romero's body was like nothing he had seen before, fixing itself faster than anyone thought possible. He, they brought him to Australia, and he had a fractured orbital, and they brought him to the doctor. So he gets examined, and then the doctor calls the UFC and goes, where did you get this guy? And they go, what do you mean? And they go, he's a fucking specimen. And he goes, oh, yeah, he's amazing, right? And they go, no, 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 you don't understand. He goes, I've been a doctor for 50 years. I've never seen someone like him. He said his, the tendons in his eyes are three times larger than a normal person's. He said the orbital fracture, it's already healing fighter, Yoel Romero Romero, took six months off to rest and let his body finish healing. When he got back in the ring, he was stronger than ever. He fought against Clifford Stark and won the fight with a powerful flying knee. It was like he never got hurt in the first place. People were amazed by Romero's strength and agility. They had never seen anyone like him before. The way his body healed so quickly only added to the other conspiracy conspiracy theories about who he is. In 2016, Yoel Romero had an intense fight against Chris Weidman at UFC 205. During the fight, Chris landed a solid football kick on the head of Yoel Romero. But Yoel didn't fall down. Yoel wasn't just standing. He kept fighting as if nothing had happened quickly ended the fight with his signature move, a flying kick to the head of his opponent. It was like a movie scene. Yoel instantly stole the win in the hearts of everyone watching. He kept winning fight after fight like a machine. But in 2018, he had another tough battle against Luke Rockhold at UFC 215. 
Oh. During the fight, Noel got hurt again, this time with a broken orbital bone. It was a serious injury that needed surgery right away. Luckily, the doctor managed to fix Yoel's bone, but he had to stay away from fighting for several weeks. But since it is Yoel Romero's body we are talking about, it healed really fast. In just two months, he was back in the ring, ready to fight again. In the early parts of 2019, Yoel Romero broke his hand while fighting against Paulo Costa had to undergo surgery to fix it. After the surgery, it didn't take long for Yoel to head right back to training. Yoel doesn't seem afraid of injuries and puts his body on the line during fights, exactly what the fans want to see. His reckless fighting style is not new to the fans. Aside from the conspiracy theories that continue to spread, some believe that Yoel Romero fights the way he does to test the limits of his body, completely embodying the true meaning of being a martial artist. The following year, he suffered yet another injury to his shoulder while fighting an equally daring fighter, Israel Adesanya, at UFC 248. Just like every other injury he had, Yoel needed immediate surgery. This time, he was out of the ring for approximately five months. Yoel Romero's amazing fighting skills and insane recovery speed not only got him loyal fans, but they also raised lots of questions and conspiracies regarding his almost superhuman abilities. Many believe he has some kind of connection to the Cuban Scientific Institution, particularly the Cuban Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. In simple terms, they believe his genes were altered and improved in a lab enabling him to do things normal people could only achieve in their dreams. came up from him? What made him is that mm -hmm. Cuban program. Yeah. They turn you into a machine! Yeah. They're basically suggesting that he just might be a superhuman. They were violent, boiling up from within. Let go! But who knows? It could be real or it could be false. There's no way to find out. All we can do is watch from the sidelines and witness mixed martial arts at their peak. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. See you all soon.